Hi friends, thanks for joining me for this Mama Moo Monday. Today we are going to check out why Mama Moo is the most underrated K-pop group. This video was created by Nahi Sioki. Hopefully I said that properly. But regardless, I'm going to put a link down in the description. Shall we? As K-pop keeps getting immense popularity worldwide, appealing to a wider audience and slowly getting into mainstream territory, there is one group that despite both local and global success remains largely overlooked. And there are definitely not enough videos out there about them. So let's dive into it. No, I have just... <sighs> okay. So you will find me doing this often. Um, jeez. Usually it's with Mama Moo. Mama Moo is a four-member South Korean girl group from an underdog company that debuted in 2014. Uh, but sometimes making them part of the I will K-pop generation of start idols. something. Renowned for their exceptional um, vocal abilities, their start range, thinking of charisma, saying something, delivery, but then I just brand. get so distracted. They are set apart as a group with unparalleled talent and originality in the industry. Like that. <laughs> from the moment they started, Mama Moo has been consistently I forget to. Uh, oh, jeez, Louise forging a genre of their own. Never mind. Their okay, let's just watch this badass, thing. But offers an alternative that challenges the usual stereotypical portrayal of girl groups often designed to cater to the male gaze. Mm. Instead, they went with their own style, debuted older than what is the norm, and subjected themselves to the harsh criticisms of a public that wasn't used to idols not abiding to their impossibly high standards. They were often disrespected for their unconventional visuals and personalities, not embodying the cute and innocent image that female idols usually adopt. As young trainees, Solar, Moonbuel, Wien, and Hwasa had to prove their way to success with the one element that truly matters Ooh, and is too often I dismissed. Sure here. Music. First ever artist of their company Rainbow Bridge World, the girls had one chance so to make a lasting impression. RW, and RBW that they did. Mm -hmm. Cutie pies. Even though they gained attention with this first stage, the girls had very little to build upon, not benefiting from what the already established agencies with money and reputation do. In the early years, RBW couldn't even afford them a choreographer, leaving the group to make their own dances and promoting their songs with oh, street that's performances, cool. while other groups would access large-scale promotions and resources upon debut. Not yeah. only were the girls struggling financially, they would also mention how they'd feel out of place and snubbed from industry actors. But despite the hardships, Mama Moo would start growing a small fandom and achieve some success, like their first music a show small win fandom. with the song You're the Best. <laughs> it's gigantic now. Yeah. 
Yay! Over the course of their career, Mamamoo has shown significant maturity and evolution in their music, consistently delivering high-quality performances and attesting that there is no genre or style they cannot master. And even though there aren't many topics on which the K-pop community aligns, the girls' indisputable talent, charismatic oh. stage presence, and flawless live vocals are a unanimous agreement. I love the the mix in this. I love that uh, the instrumentals wasn't overpowering the voices. To survive in an industry that entertains most of the spotlight on visuals and hard choreographies, Mamamoo would stand out by participating in vocal-centric shows like Immortal Songs and infuse their performances with fun moments and ad-libs in award shows that are usually a little more... serious. <laughs> I have seen one of the Immortal songs, the, the medley, but I'd like to see the rest. <laughs> ah, they're a little out of place. At this point, you might see how Mamamoo's fresh and forward attitude may have shaken pre-established models, yet we've only scratched the surface of the extent to their influence and artistry, starting with their music. Their discography explores so many various styles, from the jazz soul and funk influences of their first EPs. To pop and R&B with projects like the four season EPs or the album Travel. Or even hip hop and blues in reality and black. Destiny makes me cry, destiny makes me smile. Go jang na na chin ba nun do go tora, get a little and do she hold on. Boon mo go ni, eat and him dirty and yam and mud. I forget how many songs they have in their discography. I think it's. The one video lot, I can like, only urge you to watch if you want over a fast hundred, introduction to their catalog is the Killing Voice special. Several it's hundreds? Really worth it. I, ca I can't remember. Although profit-driven control has limited creative agency of many idols within their company, the members of Mamamoo are invested musicians with hands-on input on their work. They are in fact the most That's credited good. girl group in KOMCA history, wow. the Korea Music Copyright Association that registrates when an artist participates in the writing of song composition, lyrics, or arrangement. Moonbill, 115. Crazy. With themes like heartbreaks and trying to cling on to something that's falling apart, the turbulence of modern life with introspection on pain growth and loneliness, or uplifting anthems that bring a message of self-respect and confidence, really? the quartet's mission is to creatively evoke powerful emotions in their audience something they achieve brilliantly by incorporating vivid imagery and metaphors that add richness and dimension to their storytelling. Mm. Paint me, huh? 
붉은 자욱이 남아서 내 맘에 아직 따뜻해 One of their most recognized I've only works seen... in that aspect is their conceptual project entitled Four Seasons, Four Colors, a year-long multi-EP installment that represented Eight of each their member music through a seasonal-themed lens. That's just crazy. 한국은 사계절이 굉장히 뚜렷한 나라예요. 그래서 계절 계절마다 그 감성들을 느낄 수가 있는데 Four Seasons 앨범에는 그 사계절의 감성을 그대로 담은 앨범이에요. I think that's a brilliant concept, the Four Seasons. This era enabled the group to capture the attention of new fans and make a significant turning point in their career, reaching heights they had yet to achieve. But with more success comes more scrutiny, and as a team that has made clear from the very start that they would not play by the rules or answer to please, the mm -hmm. girls had to face numerous backlash in that time. To add context, South Korea is still drowning in conservative ideology. The word feminist alone is enough to cause outrage, and idols out of all people are to remain in line and not cause controversy, which mm. is why most of them don't openly affiliate with any social movements. The Harvard Political Review states, In South Korea, an activist can face barriers to her political career, a K-pop star is met with fans burning her photos, and YouTubers receive death threats. Well. Politicians refer to feminism as toxic as terrorism, and even women's rights activists hesitate to use the term feminist to describe themselves in fear of discrimination and judgment. In those circumstances, you can That's see how bad. female idols that deliberately exercise their confidence on stage encourage fans to step out of the mold and explicitly don't care for the prejudices thrown their way are judged as a threat to some. Mamamoo are not one. They're to definitely very confident, aren't they? And when they don't they? answer directly to those critics in interviews and videos, they do this. I don't wanna be much in them, I'm dead or fallen. Marty, I get more to die, he In 2019, they come back with Hip, a single that will cement their position as a main actor in the industry. The chart-topping track gathers most of the ideas that the group has been trying to convey, with each of the girls embodying different characters that initiate important conversations. Oh. With a single song, they manage to make a statement about climate change, Maybe give exposure to drag queens, I mean, represent are. strong women from every profession, and address the media criticisms. Mm. The song will go on to become a massive hit, peaking at number one in many countries, as well as in the <sighs> Billboard World Digital Song Sales and the worldwide iTunes album chart. A milestone for a girl group that doesn't come from the big three and has basically built itself up. Later on, they continued to break records with new songs like Aya and walked their own path out of the mainstream trends by releasing an album made entirely of ballads. Very bold move for a K-pop act. Totally. But Mamamoo's cultural and political impact doesn't stop there. While misogyny intersects with other social issues such as race and sexual orientation, the girls have made themselves advocates and allies of marginalized groups, using their platform to shed light on important topics or create a safe space for underrepresented communities. <laughs> They're like, what's going on here?
활동하고 있는 드레 아티스트 나나 영롱 킴입니다. 아, 서울 키어 문화 축제라는 곳에도 기부를 했었다라는 네. 소식을 전달했을 때 week. 이제 많은 모든 멤버들이 다 긍정적으로 반응해 주셨지만 특히 윤별 씨가 칼도 굉장히 녹슨 칼, 그러니까 굉장히 비위생적인 칼을 아. 사용을 하는 거예요. Yeah. 저는 이번 기회에 말하고 싶지만 저는 성별을 넣는 걸 별로 좋아하지 않거든요. 성별을 지금 하는 걸 좋아하지 않는데 이번 기회에 또 저희 의견을 또 회사에서 또 들으시고 또잘 생각해 주셨으면 좋겠다라는 말씀도 전달을 드렸습니다. While queer baiting has been a rising conversation in K-pop, Mama Moo's stance and actions speak for themselves. There are so many more examples than the ones I've shown you. Like how they're the first ever K-pop group to have a queer fan club that raises funds for LGBT plus projects, or how Moonbeol used to write letters every year on National Coming Out Day. To Mama Moo, being so different cool. is not something you need to hide or be ashamed of. 이 시대가 말하는 미의 기준에 내가 맞지 않다면 내가 또 다른 기준이 되어야 한다. Yeah, she is like super skinny here. And as each member forged a distinctive solo career alongside their group activities, they continued to convey the team's beliefs and artistry while exploring their own. Wasa's career as a solo artist is very much in resonance with Mama Moo's message. She often addresses the pressure and expectations placed on her as a public figure and confronts the societal standards that have affected her self-esteem. Mm. If from the outside her songs may sound upbeat and fun, the lyrics are often introspective and expose the inner demons and struggles she deals with every day. <laughs> Maria is her, her Christian name, right? Wow. I, and while she remains the main target of hate, the, she has leveraged it oh. into a source of strength, becoming one of the most successful and admired soloists in the country the translated and maintaining a consistent aura. presence on the music charts. They, they had the English translation of that because I didn't know what Maria was about. Uh, there was just a lot of gyration whenever she performed it. Like other members of the group, Hwasa's recognition also comes from her impact on the Korean hip hop and R&B scene, with the multiple collaborations she's worked on with rappers like Loco, DPR Live, Epic High, and others. Wynn just ha had her um, first world tour. Oh, it's still going on. The ones that I watch. So. The concert from Seoul. Wow! Wien's expression for the majority of her solo work has been delving into the turbulence of young adulthood through soft pop and R&B inspirations paired with poetic imagery. 
As she grows to appreciate herself more as an artist, she learns not to dwell on the past and look to a brighter future with the newfound confidence fans gave her. Her delicate yet powerful voice makes her an excellent fit for a wide range of music styles, which she had the opportunity to explore through collaborations with artists like Sick K, PH1, or Cold. Mm. And while she enjoys taking on new challenges that showcase her incredible versatility, Ween's core characteristic is defined by her ability to marry disciplines, like the artwork she created for her song Goodbye, where she offers a rare representation of same-sex love in a K-pop music video. Which one is this? As the main rapper of the group, Moon Biol has had the chance with her own music to broaden her artistic horizons and demonstrate her full capabilities. Known for releasing songs with gender-neutral or ambiguous lyrics, she's crafted a unique identity around her androgynous image, challenging the binary view of gender through music, which is very well exhibited in the sultry, sapphic anthem shutdown that she wrote and performed with Sori, another icon of the queer community. <sighs> Write these things down. The rest of her catalog either delves into introspective storytelling, where she lays bare her emotions and tackles themes like loneliness and self-hatred, or into more uplifting songs with a few collaborations with mostly female singers. Rest of the members, Solar is still at the start of her solo journey, and aside I'm always from the afraid that dramas, confetti covers, would just like land in their mouths when they Her own material came sing. about in the form of refreshing songs and strong visuals that capture her bright and breezy personality. Hmm. Despite her Very playful sultry. lyrics and demeanor, her music upholds an important message of valuing inner beauty and uniqueness, principles she's steadfastly embraced throughout her career with her carefree attitude and attraction to unconventional concepts. 
Whether it's through her YouTube channel, television appearances, or musical theater, Solar has consistently demonstrated that she possesses one of the most spectacular voices of the industry. I just love this song. What is the title of this song? If pushing artistic boundaries far and wide as a group or as soloists is part of Mamamoo's greatest achievements, they also enjoy the calmer phases of their career, using them as opportunities to experiment and maintain their reputation as a constant source of creative surprises. Among those would be their anthology album released in 2021 that revisits their greatest hits with remixes and new arrangements. Oh, that's cool. Or the first subunit of the quartet, with Solar and Moonbeal joining forces as Mamamoo Plus. While Wee-In and Hwasa work on their solo activities, which doesn't stop them from still collaborating mm. together. Throughout their journey, Mamamoo has maintained their down-to-earth and approachable demeanor, curating a close relationship with their fans, but also with each other, supporting their individual endeavors and harmonizing their talents to create they a do unique love their fans. and sound. As they continue to walk the Rainbow Bridge and captivate audiences around the world with their talent and authenticity, my hope is that this video gave honor to their legacy and allowed you to get to know them, their art, and what they stand for a little better. <laughs> they do have the best greeting though and apparently the best goodbye that's awesome thank you nice yoki that was really cool definitely something that i wanted to watch thank you for suggesting this i can't remember who suggested it but i appreciate you Thanks again for joining me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you next time. Mwah.